This video is part of an audio series featuring the book The Future is Faster Than You Think by Diamandis and Kotler. For more audiobooks, visit my YouTube channel or website for downloads. Chapter 10 The Future of Longevity The Nine Horsemen of Our Apocalypse Earlier in this book, we explored how extending the healthy human lifespan will have a significant impact on the rate of change in the world. The equation was fairly simple. Longer lives means more time spent at our productive best, which means more innovation. But what we didn't cover in any detail was how this would happen. Here, on the back end of our exploration of the related field of healthcare, we want to turn our attention to this question of longevity seeing how the forces of convergence are rewriting the rules in the race between technology and immortality. And the place to start? Mortality itself, the life clock known as aging. Aging is not just a running down of the system, explains longevity researcher and director of the National Institutes of Health, Francis Collins. It is a programmed process, Evolution probably had an investment in having the lifespan of a particular species not go on forever. You've got to get the old folks out of the way so the young ones have a chance at the resources. To get the old folks out of the way, evolution devised a failsafe, planned obsolescence, otherwise known as aging. It's a redundant plan. Scientists now believe that there are nine main causes of our decline, the nine horsemen of an internal apocalypse. We're going to spend the rest of this chapter investigating the strategies being deployed to defeat this decline. Yet before we do that, we first need to meet these horsemen and explore the fundamental question they answer. What exactly is killing us? One, genomic instability. DNA does not always replicate according to plan. Typically, these errors in gene expression get caught and corrected, but not always. Over time, these misfires build up, causing our body to wear down, meaning genetic instability leads to genetic damage, leads to a limit on lifespan. Think of it as a broken copy machine, except instead of producing unreadable pages, our broken genetic copier produces diseases like cancer, muscular dystrophy, and ALS. 2. Telomere Attrition At the heart of a cell, DNA is packed into thread-like structures called chromosomes. Chromosomes are capped by telomeres, or short snippets of DNA repeated thousands of times. These repetitions act as barriers, like bumpers on a car, designed to protect the core of the chromosome. But as DNA replicates, telomeres get shorter. At a critical shortness threshold, the cells stop dividing, and we become much more susceptible to disease. 3. Epigenetic Alterations Nature impacts nurture. Over the course of a lifetime, factors in our environment can change how our genes express, sometimes for the worse. Exposure to carcinogens in the environment can silence the gene that suppresses tumors, for example. These cells start to grow uncontrollably, and cancer is the result. 4. Loss of proteostasis Inside a cell, proteins run the show. They transport materials, send signals, switch processes on and off, and provide structural support. But proteins become less effective over time, so the body recycles them. Unfortunately, as we age, we lose this ability. The trash collector goes on strike, and we suffer a toxic buildup of proteins that can, for example, lead to diseases such as Alzheimer's. 5. Nutrient sensing goes awry. The human body relies on over 40 different nutrients to stay healthy. For everything to work perfectly, cells need to be able to recognize and process each of these. But this ability breaks down as we get older. For example, one reason people gain weight as they age is that our cells can no longer properly digest fat. And one reason we die is that this impacts the insulin and IGF-1 pathway and can result in diabetes. 6. Mitochondrial Dysfunction 
Mitochondria are power plants. By converting oxygen and food into energy, they provide the basic fuel for our cells. But performance declines over time. The result is free radicals, a damaging form of oxygen that mangles DNA and proteins and leads to many of the chronic illnesses associated with aging. 7. Cellular Senescence As cells undergo stress, they occasionally become senescent, both losing their ability to divide and simultaneously becoming resistant to death. These zombie cells can't be removed from the body. They build up over time, infect neighboring cells, and ultimately create a zombie apocalypse of inflammatory debilitation. 8. Stem Cell Exhaustion As we age, our supply of stem cells plummets, in certain cases by a 10,000-fold decline. Worse, the ones we do manage to hang on to become far less active. This means that the body's internal tissue and organ repair system loses its ability to do its job. 9. Altered Intercellular Communication For the body to function properly, cells need to communicate. This happens constantly, with messages flowing through our bloodstream, immune system, and endocrine system. Endocrine system. Hmm? Over time, signals get crossed. Some cells become unresponsive. Others become inflammation-producing zombie cells. This inflammation further blocks further communication. Once this happens, messages can't get through, and the immune system can't find pathogens. There we have it. Now that we know what's killing us, let's see what just might be saving us. Longevity Escape Velocity Want to win a Nobel Prize? Study worms. And don't just study any worm, study the roundworm, Canorhabidus elegans, or as her friends call her, C. elegans. And this worm has a lot of friends. Six scientists have already taken home Swedish gold for their work on the creature. As a result, C. elegans was the first organism to have its genes sequenced as its whole genome screened and its connectome, the wiring diagram of its brain's neuron, mapped. But despite this celebrated history, many feel that the groundworm's greatest contribution is still to come, as C. elegans is also the first animal to go head-to-head -head with death and win. In a petri dish, C. elegans lives about 20 days. Back in 2014, a group of NIH scientists at the Buck Institute for Research and Aging decided to try and increase that number. Previous research had shown that there were two ways to have an impact. Knocking out a gene named RSKS1 increases lifespan by six days. Knocking out a gene called DAF2, meanwhile, extended it by 20 days. But what happened, these researchers wanted to know, if they knocked out both at once? Take an educated guess. The researchers estimated that such double mutants might live about 45 days, wrote NIH director Francis Collins, who funded the work. But to their surprise, when they actually created such worms, some of the critters were still alive and squirming at 100 days. That's an amazing five-fold increase in worm lifespan, the equivalent of 400-year-old humans. Applying this same process to human lifespan, that's exactly what's at the heart of the field of longevity. Genetics, of course, play a critical role. Building out on this earlier work on C. elegans, other researchers have since identified over 50 more genes that seem to trigger age-related decline. Five of these genes seem especially key, as removing any of them produces a 20% boost in lifespan. But it's not just genetics. Martine Rothblatt's mission to produce an endless supply of human replacement parts is also crucial to longevity, as is the democratization of surgery being provided by robotics and the drug discovery work being done by AIs and quantum computers. But the point isn't this or that technique. It's the combinatory power of all of these approaches that are leading us in a very new direction. The old direction was our 30-year lifespan, which held constant from the Paleolithic age to the front end of the Industrial Revolution. During the 20th century, marvels such as antibiotics, sanitation, 
and clean water extended our average age to 48 years by 1950 and then to 72 years by 2014. But these days, Ray Kurzweil and longevity expert Aubrey de Grey have, been, have begun talking about longevity escape velocity, or the idea that soon, science will be able to extend our lives for a year, by, or by a year for every year that we live. In other words, once across this, thresh, this threshold, we will literally be staying one step ahead of death. Kurzweil thinks this threshold is about 12 years away, while de Grey puts it 30 years out. And why should we believe them? One basic fact, you can't take it with you. All of the money in the world is useless in the grave. So how much would the wealthy pay for an extra healthy decade or two, or three? The answer is a lot. And this helps explain the increasing investments being made into anti-aging technologies, with Google's Calico, an acronym standing for California Life Company, being perhaps the most visible example. More critical, while a longer life for the wealthy might not seem that worthwhile of a goal, as we've seen with every other accelerating technology, it isn't long before the benefits become demonetized and democratized. And this means that possibly you, and definitely your children, will have the potential to tack decades onto your life, simply because, as time passes, all of us will intercept a gaggle of anti-aging technologies along the way. Now let's turn our attention to a few of the most promising. The anti-aging pharmacy. Easter Island is remote. It's exotic. It's home to strange rumors and stone heads, and often strange rumors about stone heads. Some say the elders with the right spells can wake the heads from their slumber, controlling them like a giant stone army. Others say the heads themselves have the control over your life force with both the ability to steal it, bringing on an early death, or amplify it, conferring virility and strength on a chosen few. Then, in the mid-1960s, a small team of researchers discovered that this last bit, that of conferring strength and virility part, might be more than just a rumor. It started when the very small and very isolated community living on Easter Island decided they'd had enough. Enough smallness, enough isolation. It was time, they decided, to build an airport. Scientists freaked out. One of the most ecologically untainted regions of the world was about to lose its purity. In an emergency effort, an, envir an international team was rushed in to collect flora, fauna, and microbial samples, including, most critically for our story, dirt excavated from beneath one of the island's mysterious heads. The dirt ended up in the hands of a Canadian microbiologist named Søren Sagel, who discovered it did, in fact, contain magical powers of the antifungal variety. Sagel purified the compound, naming it Rapamycin after the country's original name, Rapa Nui. Despite its potential, Sagel's research money ran out, and the compound was shelved until the late 1970s when he got enough funding to take a second look. This is when he discovered there was more magic in that dirt. Rapamycin wasn't just antifungal, it also suppressed the immune system, giving it a lot of potential in organ transplant operations. This potential has become an industry. Rapamycin has since been used for everything from coating heart stents to ensuring that patients don't reject their new kidney. And then researchers made even more incredible discovery about this magic dirt. Rapamycin inhibits cancer growth. The compound blocks a protein that facilitates cell division. Do this in worms, flies, and yeast, and the result isn't just cancer protection, it's longevity. This raised the next question. Would the magic work in mammals? In 2009, NIH scientists answered that one, showing that rapamycin extends the lives of mice by as much as 16%. In 2014, the combination of all these findings led Novartis to decide to test it in humans, marking the first official trial of an anti-aging compound by a major drug company. But once scientists figured out that there really was magic in the dirt, the search for other anti-aging compounds was underway. 
one place this search led was our medicine cabinet, where we found a drug called metformin. The world's most common diabetes drug, metformin blocks sugar production and helps regulate insulin. But it also slows the burn rate of cells, defending against oxidative stress, fighting cancer, and, as we recently learned, significantly extending the lifespan of worms, mice, and rats. Does it work in humans? That remains an open question, but researchers are trying to find out more. While rapamycin and metformin protect against the ravages of old age, other scientists are looking for compounds that turn back the clock entirely. Known as senolytic therapies, these drugs destroy the inflammation-producing zombie cells, believed to be one of the causes of aging. A half dozen companies are now involved in this effort, producing about a dozen drugs that obliterate zombie cells, delaying or alleviating everything from frailty and osteoporosis to cardiological dysfunction and neurological disorder. Backed by investments from Jeff Bezos, the late Paul Allen, and Peter Thiel, Unity Biotechnology is one of the most interesting of these. They've developed a way to identify, then kill, senolytic cells, or at least they've developed a way that works in mice. But it really works. Periodic treatments from midlife forward both extend lifespan by 35% and keep the mouse healthier along the way. Everything from lower energy levels to the development of cataracts and kidney dysfunction, all common symptoms of aging, are either avoided entirely or their onset is significantly delayed. With nearly a dozen drugs under development for nearly all the maladies of decrepitude, including a few that have completed phase one human trials and are still moving forward, unity remains one to watch in the anti-aging space. Finally, there's Samumed, maybe one of the most watched of today's longevity companies. Backed by a $12 billion valuation, this San Diego-based biotech is focusing on the WNT signaling pathways, which, like the name sounds, are one way the body sends messages. In this case, those messages govern a group of genes that both aid the growth of a developing fetus and seem to play a heavy role in aging. Errors in WNT signaling have been directly linked to 20 different diseases, including cancer. This is also why these pathways have been a long-time target of almost every major pharmaceutical company. Samumid, though, may have cracked the code. They've focused their efforts on one particular WNT pathway that regulates the behavior of adult stem cells. Via this methodology, Sumumed has delivered or developed nine different so-called regenerative medicines. All are in the FDA's pipeline, including everything from hair loss drugs to Alzheimer's drugs. Yet it's their success against arthritis and cancer that has garnered the most attention. We will start with arthritis, which afflicts 350 million people worldwide. We currently have no known treatment for the condition. But in 2017, Samumed published the results of a small study on knee osteoarthritis. 61 patients were in the trial, each receiving a single injection of a WNT rebalancing drug directly into their knee. All 61 saw improvement. When researchers measured the impact of the drug six months later, they found less pain and greater mobility, including an average of nearly two millimeters of new cartilage. The molecule stays there for about six months, explains CEO Osman Kabar, during which it stimulates stem cells to grow new cartilage. And that cartilage is that of a teenager. The key is that progenitor stem cells are there even when you're 80 years old. They just need to be properly signaled. Yet this may be only the beginning. An injection of the same molecule into the spine of rats whose intervertebral disc has been destroyed regenerates a whole new disc. If you look at the quality of cells, the disc is younger and stronger. Getting this to work in humans is a different story. Very few drugs make the leap from mice to men or women, but other Samumid molecules developed to repair both rotator cuff and Achilles tendon injuries have already made it through phase one trials and their knee arthritis drug is now entering phase three. 
there's still a lot more work to be done, but the upside could be a drug that provides decades of healthy mobility. Arguably the more exciting arm of Samumed's research is their work in cancer, which is, essential, which is essentially stem cells gone haywire. By silencing the signaling pathway that leads to this frenzy, Samumed's drugs target, quite literally, every type of tumor. Most of these medicines are still in preclinical or phase one safety and efficacy trials, yet under compassionate use laws, Samumed has been able to give them to terminal patients. Here, the results have been remarkable. In one small effort, a low-dose three-treatment protocol halted tumor growth in 80% of the study group. In another study involving pancreatic cancer, a longer protocol with the same compound managed to stave off this normally fatal disease. All treatments had failed this woman, explains Kabar, talking about one patient's experience. She weighed less than 70 pounds, and doctors had sent her home to die. But now, after a year on our medicine, she's back to normal. She's traveling, dating, weighs 120 pounds, just living her regular life. Of course, we're still in the early days for this compound, but it's a promising start to say the least. The Bloody Fountain of Youth In the early 2000s, a group of Stanford researchers went looking for the Fountain of Youth in an unusual place, the Dracula myth. Legends going back to the ancient Greeks, recaptured in the Roman poetry of Ovid, and revived again in Gothic vampire tales, talk of the rejuvenating effects of young blood. These Stanford researchers decided to test the theory on mice. Updating the gruesome, ancient technique of parabiosis, they linked together the circulatory system of a young mouse to the circulatory system of an old mouse, then pumped the former's blood through the latter's system. Results were visible to the naked eye. The young blood revived the older animal. Upon closer inspection, the benefits went far beyond the visible. A variety of the old mouse's tissues and organs now had the characteristics of a far younger, healthier mouse. Follow-up studies both confirmed this finding and showed that the opposite was also true. Transfuse younger animals with blood from older ones, and the clock spins forward, accelerating decrepitude, amplifying aging. This work sparked a ton of interest. Within a decade, researchers had begun to tease apart why this useful, youthful transformation was occurring. A team at Harvard got involved, discovering that young blood sparks the formation of new neurons in the brain and reverses age-related thickening of the walls of the heart. Finally, getting down to the root of the matter, the Harvard team also found one particular molecule, known as a growth differentiation factor 11 or GDF11, that appeared responsible for all, or at least some, of these benefits. In 2014, a paper published in Cell, a different team of researchers showed that simply injecting GDF11 into mice increased strength, memory, and blood flow to the brain. Additional studies have extended these benefits, demonstrating that GDF11 can reduce age-related cardiac issues, accelerate muscle repair, improve exercise capacity, and amplify brain functions. All of this work has sparked entrepreneurial interest. The Harvard spin-out Elevian, for example, led by entrepreneur Dr. Mark Allen and a quartet of the school's regenerative biology professors is seeking longevity in GDF11 and similar age retardant molecules. The Stanford spin-out Alkahest, meanwhile, is searching for an optimized plasma cocktail as a treatment for Alzheimer's. Wired called these kinds of efforts a needle in a haystack approach because blood plasma contains more than 10,000 different proteins. Really, it's a needle in a gold stack approach because identifying which proteins produce the young blood effect has led to a biological gold rush. Startups are hot on the trail, not to mention major pharmaceutical companies. In 2017, the National Institute on Aging committed $2.35 million in funds for scientists interested in this work. So yes, here in the 21st century, 
Not only are flying cars and personal robots both suddenly real, but also, so is Dracula. For thousands of years, we've been working, we've been searching for the location of the Fountain of Youth. But what all this work makes clear is that what we've been hunting is less a place than a time. The Fountain of Youth is a specific period in history, the point at which technology converges on mortality. So while, will we be able to live forever, remains an unanswered question, turning a hundred years old into the new 60, that is, significantly extending human lifespan, has changed from a question of if to a matter of when and how. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.